Hero Festival right now. This is the Taiko performance, part of the schedule. I'll take you downstairs in a minute, but let's enjoy some Taiko. some students from Coast Prefecture over there. Let me take you outside of the front lawn and I'll show you inside of the building a little bit, but if you didn't, if you didn't believe me, here are the stars and stripes right here. So because of rain that's gonna be happening later today, a lot of the festival has been moved inside. But I'm ready to party. This is a, a festival I was looking forward to for quite a long time. Um, it's not often that you'll see a Japanese festival on the east coast of the United States, away from Hawaii and California. But because of that connection with John Manjiro, and if you don't know the story, you're gonna wanna go online and check it out because it is one of these amazing stories. When you read it, you're like, how did I not know about John Manjiro? Uh, he was, uh, I'll tell you the story a little bit about it. I'm actually making a Man Channel episode on it right now, but the town hall, look at this building. It's, at, it's You don't expect that in a small town in the United States, something so, so incredibly beautiful. And a lot of the town has been preserved the way it was back in the 19th century, the 18th century, during the time of, of great whaling, because a lot of the money was built up because of that. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's the Stars and Stripes right up there, too. Um, they actually have yakisoba going on over here. Which is pretty crazy to see. I smell yakisoba. I can smell it. There's some, some girls from Japan visiting in kimono. Uh, some of the high school students, this is a good time also for some exchanges. High school students from Coach Prefecture will come here because of the relationship as a sister city from the city of Tosa Shimizu. WRX Turbo is in the house. I see that. All right, I'm going to take you upstairs and I'm going to show you some more of the taiko drums while it's going on because it's really cool.
a secret entrance on the side here. Places are rocking. You can come knocking. Woo! Hey, aloha, Brandania. Is that a breath? So this afternoon they had, or sorry, th uh, just about an hour ago they had some speeches. The great success of the 18th John. With representatives from Coach Prefecture were here. There's Jason, my friend over there on the left side, who's also in Tosa Shimizu in Kochi. Jerry, the CEO of the uh, Whitfield Manjiro Friendship Club. Friendship Association, sorry. Overseas more from out of town, really. So, my name is Mark H. Rudy. I'm the founder and the director of the Mark H. Taiko Connection. Woo! Taiko! Yes, three of you may sound familiar to me. Here, I'll give you a hint. Resemblance, <laughs> yes, I was born in New Bedford, raised right over here in Krishnit. And it's great to be back. Born uh, in America, festival, playing taiko drums. Taiko awesome. 26 years ago. So, back here performing, uh, celebrating 25 years of taiko. And uh, that equals half my life. You do the math. <laughs> I don't have to say the words. The same as me. Nonetheless, the members of the Mark H. Taiko Connection here with me today are, starting with Kota Mizutani. Wow. 
you asked me the last time we played here, four years ago, at the last Frontier Festival. And of course, uh, very special to me, but to all of us, of course, uh, Kristen Koyama, my spouse, my partner. Who has played on this stage numerous times. <laughs> so, anyway, um, we do taiko, which is of course the Japanese word for drum, but what we do is kind of a combination of more traditional festival rhythms and more contemporary rhythms. I'm guessing you can see that last piece was probably more on the contemporary side. <laughs> A little bit of big band, a little bit of fun, playing with some cymbals and things like that. That song is a song that I wrote. Yeah, that's the not normal taiko. That's awesome taiko. Next level. Taiko is traditionally played at a lot of festivals, these matsuri they have in Japan. And of course, a lot of times it accompanies wow. dance. So at any time in this program, any time you feel like getting up and dancing, you should. I'm not pointing you out. Anyone, anyone should. Some people are sitting in the back who are like, well, I was hoping no one would notice me back here. You should get up and dance at any time. Okay, so the next song, actually, uh, I should mention the first song is based on traditional uh, rhythms and called Tsuhachijo, based on different uh, rhythms from around Japan. Uh, that was followed by a song that I wrote a while ago called Take 15. Uh, Take 15 is a 15 count cycle modern taiko song. Kind of a play on Dave Brubeck, take five. As you can see, when you play title, you need 15, not five. So we take 15. Anyway, the next song we're going to play is also something that came about during uh, this thing that happened in the last four years or so. I don't know. Does anyone remember? There's some kind of gap in time. That yeah. I was sitting around in my house, uh, largely eating peanut MMs and um, binge watching a lot of Netflix. Uh, and I was kind of not doing a lot of typing because, as you can see, this takes a lot of being out here. So I'm so glad we're able to do this again. But I did write. Let me take you down here. He's going to play a more of a traditional song. He wrote some taiko songs. He's been playing, doing taiko for 25 years. I've been living in Japan for 25 years. What a coincidence! Let me show you some. They might be watching the taiko though. Just for a minute, and I'll take you in to see the taiko for a, in a, a minute later. But in the back room here, they would be doing this outside, but because of the. Uh, and here they are doing kendama. Oh, that's pretty good. In here. If you tell them your name, they will write it in kanji here, which is pretty crazy. And this is Jason. He's traveled all the way from Kochi to be here. Yes, yes. Yes. How are you doing? I'm well, yeah, man. Yeah. Jet lag? Not jet lag, actually, but, you know, busy, busy, but... Oh, this is a sorobushi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, you can try it? Whoa. Oh, my gosh. It's like katsuobushi, which is a bonito uh, fish, but it's... Oh, that feels so satisfactory. Oh, that feels so good. Be, car ah. be careful with your fingers. Be careful with your fingers. That's it. That feels so good. You got some... So I think those guys on top are the, the ones that you shaved. Oh, look at that. So, wow. So th this is from uh, Tosa Shimizu, which yeah. is in Kochi. And it's very good. Mm. Thank you. So in here, there's some Japanese students that are doing calligraphy. So you, again, you tell them your name and their challenge is to find the kanji, Japanese characters. To put it in there. Very cool. Look at this. And here they're, re they're researching the kanji right there to make sure. They're researching the kanji right there so that it's it's quite a challenge to get it right and in a positive way because not all kanji are equal. <laughs> 
Oh, the taiko drum started. Let me take you back upstairs. See you later. Take care. Where's the secret door? Secret door, okay. Samisen going. Rock the Samisen. Got a six time zoom on there. The acoustics in here are awesome. There's my dad over there. Okay. Um, so mother Encore. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this next piece. Um, this is a piece called Waiting for Spring, and it's based on a style of drumming um, called Hana Hachito, which was developed by uh, someone named Chiyoko Kojima from the professional Check it out. From here you can look out the window. The streets. All oh, the line for the yakisoba is still long. Lunch time, everybody's having yakisoba. But this is a pretty cool event. This is held on the first Saturday of October every year. I believe it's the first Saturday, but th this year it's on uh, October 7th, and this event has uh, um, been going on, I think, if, for, for a couple of decades now, between the sister cities of Tosa Shimizu and uh, Fairhaven. 
and a lot of students come here to uh, exchange culture. Uh, all of this coming from the friendship that Captain Whit Whitfield and John Manjiro, um, Nakahama Manjiro, had back in the 19th century. He was uh, shipwrecked fishing from Kochi and his friends on the island of Torishima. And they were there for several months, almost starving, when a whaling ship came in and they, they found these uh, boys trapped on the island. So they took them in on the whaling ship, dropped them off in Hawaii, uh, kind of figured out who they were. But John Manjiro, one of them, decided that he wanted to stay aboard the whaler and he continued on, along with Captain Whitfield all the way back to Massachusetts where he was the first Japanese in the United States. And that's a story that a lot of people know about and that um, uh, connection uh, has continued today because when he returned to Japan, which was crazy because you couldn't leave Japan back then, it was a closed country. And so when he came back to Japan, he was the only Japanese who could speak uh, English and understand Western culture. So he was a pivotal person in the history of modern Japan behind the scenes because people didn't trust him because they thought he was a spy in Japan. Well, he wasn't a spy, or was he? I don't know. But that connection between Japan and the United States is very strong. One reason is a result of John Manjiro and the captain's friendship from this town, Fairhaven. Pretty, pretty interesting. Outside. Secret door. So let's take a quick look at this yakisoba being prepared. It smells like a Japanese festival out here. Wow. Now there's a line there. It's sort of a line. I don't want to cut in line. I could just put my face on that grill. And I would be happy right now. It's a little, it's, it's not too chilly. It's very comfortable. I got a sweatshirt on. Uh, autumn is here for sure. But. Get the right camera here. I, I just, I did want to share just a little bit of the festival with you. There's going to be a, a uh, a dancing at the end at 4.30 and then uh, the festival is finished. So it goes on between... So the festival goes on between uh, 10 a.m. when they started with this really amazing flute artist. He came in a full kimono uh, and it was just fantastic. He, he played the national anthems of Japan and then the United States, which is really great. And, um, you know, I, I drove in here yesterday, kind of jet lagged out of my mind, and I'm still kind of in shock that I'm not in Japan. I'm in the United States, right? This is this is America, man. <laughs> but it smells like Japan because of that yakisoba. The leaves are just starting to change here in, in Massachusetts. And right now I'm starting to feel the raindrops coming. This is a reason why the events are usually held outside but the rains held off pretty good. Unfortunately, uh, it will rain. And then in, in that case, 
it will be glad that everything is inside but a festival it just it seems better to be outside it just seems like a fairyland this whole town it doesn't i don't know i really like it fairhaven the downtown the town hall built in 1894 this is after john manjiro john manjiro was here in the uh, uh early decades of uh early to mid 1800s but you guys remember jason he was in a live stream when i was in kochi uh at the um what do you call it? at the uh roadhouse michino eki in kochi he kind of uh, showed us a, a little bit there but in general this is a pretty cool festival and it's a celebration this festival is a celebration of the relationship that Japan and America has. And it's one that I'd, I'd heard about before, but I really wanted to come uh, this year because I am making an episode on it. So that knowledge that I shared with you comes from someplace, okay? It comes from research from the last six months, researching this festival and knowing that Fairhaven is a very important city with the relationship between Japan and the United States today, even today. The emperor himself signed the book when he came to Fairhaven because he knows of its importance. And for the longest time in, in history, John Manjiro didn't get credit for the work that he did. Um, he was the interpreter to Commodore Perry on the black ship. And imagine, like, because Perry knew that John Manjiro had lived in the United States, they could feel a little bit of comfort knowing that there was somebody who understood America. And that's a John Manjiro who had a, a massive sweet tooth. Hello. John Manjiro had a massive sweet tooth, but he also had an addiction to coffee. Are you John? Yes, I am. I watch you all the time. Oh, you do? Hey. I, I'm from this town, but I lived in Japan for 16 years and we moved back a couple of years ago. So I was like, I saw you inside. I was like, yeah. I, 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 I got to check. And then I went to the channel and saw you were there. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. So, this is really cool. What oh, are you, you doing do? here? Like, out of Hello. all the places, how did you end up here? Uh, I'm covering, I'm making an episode on uh, Manjiro, so. Okay. Is, Fairhaven's an important city in I, I, Like I said, I grew up here. Yeah. That was, because of Manjiro, I ended up in Japan. And these wow. two were both born in Japan. We lived in Hamamatsu and Shizuoka Ken. Wow. So. Um, oh, that's awesome. Oh, you did the wrong way, bud. How's the yakisoba? Good, good, but I don't know how to use chopsticks. You don't know how to use chopsticks? That's... No, yeah, in the Hamamatsu, there's a lot of uh, Brazilian. Mommy, Japanese. if you're watching, I'm on YouTube now. We. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know if you know much about Hamamatsu itself. Hamamatsu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of Brazilians and Peruvians. I know. So... I used to live in Toyohashi. Did you? Yeah, just okay. a, a one, no, one well, stop on the Shinkansen yeah, there, away from there. I was there 16 years. Um, my wife's Peruvian, Japanese Peruvian. Oh, wow. But, so she's not here, unfortunately. She's working. I was there during the World Cup 2002. <laughs> okay, I so, lived there in 2005. I lived, my first year, I lived in Maisaka. All oh, right. Right down the. Yeah, that, that was because of all the Brazilians, the World Cup was best seen in Toyo, Toyohashi. Well, going, or in, in I was there for the 2006 World Cup. Japan. Okay. So there was a lot of Brazilians. Crazy, yeah. But it was held in Japan. And of course, I couldn't go to any of the venues. They're all sold out or expensive. Oh, okay, okay, right, okay. The Japan Korea one. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I, Cheers. Okay? What's it for? All right, well, tell everybody how does it taste because I don't, I'm not eating on camera yet. <laughs> the line's too long. How does it taste? Pretty good? Yeah, pretty good. How, on, on a scale of 1 to 10. Ten. Ten? Ten? That's the top. Better than pizza? Better than ramen? Oh, you just had miso ramen last night, so. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really high ranking. That doesn't leave room for anything else. Well, like I said, I grew up here. I hosted exchange students in high school. I went to Tosunizo when I was 17. Okay. And I came back. I kind of, I was doing computer science for a couple of years, but I just decided I went to UMass Amherst, major in Japanese. Um, did a couple of more years and then I went on jet program in 2005. Okay. And I'm just staying there 16 years. 16 years and now you're back? Uh, a couple of years ago. Do you know Jason? Jason grew up in Massachusetts, but now he's been living in Tosa Shimizu for like 10 years. Really? Yeah. No, I didn't know. Which is crazy. Yeah. I'll, I'll introduce you. Okay. He's got he's got um, the Western guy with the with the hoppy, the Japan, the, like what I'm wearing. Yeah. He was, oh, there he is right there, Jason. Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. okay. Yeah, he's also a local, local Massachusetts, right, cool. Massachusetts. I, I went there, 97. Okay. Wow. It was a different, 
Actually, it probably doesn't change that much <laughs> over the I, years. I tried to go back in 2007 yeah. with me one of my buddies with another ALT. Um, we made it down to Osaka because there used to be a ferry. When I went there, there was a ferry, that an overnight ferry to get there. But right. They had stopped the services. Uh, and we were like, all right, actually, it was for the festival. So, because it's one year here, one year there. Right. But, every and, um, It alternates. Next year is in Kochi, by the way, not here. So don't come. <laughs> come here. Go to Japan for that one. I was in Hamamatsu. <laughs> Hamamatsu. That's uh, Shizuka Ken, right? Yep. Yeah, Shizuka Ken. Far. Tell you how she is. Hey, I'm camera for the first time on YouTube. I, I think that's your third time because I just can't. <laughs> How's your wife and son? They're good. They're at the onsen right now. No, no, they're, they're at the onsen right now, and I'm I'm slightly jealous, although I'm here. But they're in the bath right now. Well, they're sleeping right now, but they're soaking. Shout out to Ellis. Thank you. We drove right by you, buddy. Uh, so we kind of wave from the highway. Yeah. So fair habits. This is a big deal for the town, huh? I mean, for the people who know, yes. I mean, it is a very big historical thing. Supposedly, it's the first Japanese person to ever live in America. Um, you know, whaling used to be a big thing here. If right. You go next door to New Bedford, there's a big whaling museum, which yes. I highly recommend. That's where I'll be going, um, stopping in next. So, yeah, Captain Whitfield was uh, the captain of a whaling ship. He found Manjiro, and I think the other four guys he was on the ship with were four brothers. And um, so they got off, but... I they said they went, took one look of Hawaii and like, no, we're staying here. You yeah. want to, John? You want to get on a whaling ship? We're going to stay in Hawaii, and that's where they ended up. Uh, so he, um, I don't know. I guess it, him and Whitfield must have liked each other, and he decided to stay on the ship. Came all around. Keep in mind, back then the, the Panama Canal was not created yet. Right. So they had to go all the way around Brazil, come all the way back up. Yes. Um, so it's quite a ride. Here. I think he lived here for about ten years. Yeah. Um, learned some Manjiro English, was here for ten years. Skills. He learned yeah. everything, Western culture. I don't know if you know the Western story. girls. No, maybe. <laughs> he was on, um, uh, I guess it was a whaling ship. And, you know, he wasn't so high level, but just to show you how smart of a guy he was, I guess supposedly the captain got really sick and like went a little crazy. And so Manjiro kind of became the de facto cap uh, captain. Uh, for the rest and of the, the crew respected him because yes. he knew his yes. stuff. Yes. yes. I think Manjiro had had this same adventurous spirit. Not everybody does. His four friends didn't have that spirit, but he did, and he was really curious. He never, you know, Japanese didn't know anything about America. He wanted, he was, he wanted to find out. And I think because he had that, I don't know, that a, a, that connection with the captain. But more, it was more than that. The captain knew that he was quite in, deeply interested in learning about this kind of stuff, and that's why he came and offered his house, look even beyond and family. That. I mean, so after 10 years here, he went out to San Francisco during the gold rush. Right. And he found a bunch of gold, paid his way back to Japan with it. 49, right? Yeah. After the 48ers. Wait, uh, the 40, no, 48. Now, was he there in 50? He was in 50. I don't know if he's remember these. I, I remember the San Francisco 49ers is because of the gold rush yeah. of 49. Yeah. But I think he was there a year after. But he still was able to make $500, I believe, to get a boat from Hawaii. Don't go to the exact And he got back to Japan. This story's fast. I got a whole episode of this coming. It's so just really fast. I, I believe I read he did stop in Hawaii to see if those guys were still around. And he did see them in Tawana. Well, a yeah. couple of them had died. Okay. I think there's one or two were left. I think one wanted to stay and one came back with them. Maybe to Japan? Maybe. I, yeah, I think one of them did come. I, well, this is the thing. People will discuss this back and forth. I'm meeting like like there's a great love for John Manjiro and the discussions go on back and forth. But the, yeah. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. But then when he got back, you know, Japan was still Sakoku. So they could have. <laughs> Japan was <laughs> closed. To. He snuck in via. So they gave him the house arrest. Okinawa, and yeah. Um, I guess the local shogun, Daimyo, must have liked his story. Kept him there for a while. And then when Perry came. Oh, they tried to force them to open up like nobody in Edo spoke English so they said oh we got get Manjiro he yeah. can speak English all this from a from a fishing boy who got shipwrecked yep. late and then later on in life this fisherman and remember this is still the age of the samurai right yes. so you would not rise as a fisherman's son or actually it was I think he was making rice or something but he was doing exactly. fishing he didn't want to do what his dad did he wanted to do rice uh, he wanted to do fish not rice so he ended up uh becoming a master of that and then this little fisher boy ends up being a high-ranking government official yeah, he, in, he actually who had get promoted a, to samurai after that he got promoted to samurai that wouldn't have happened just that's how fate works and that that's what was so sakura sakura that's pretty crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's great you have a beautiful town and uh 
I'm, I'm happy to be able to show people a little bit around. I bet some people in Massachusetts don't even so know many about dogs here. Fair Haven. I got, so I, many I dogs went out to, here. Um, so Oof. For college, I was out at UMass Amherst. Okay. And then um, I went to Hokkaido University for an exchange. And I didn't know until I got out there they were both created by the same guy. Oh, really? If you know the boys be ambitious, Clark. Like, I guess, um, yeah, go ahead, get new ones. When, um, when UMass was first created, it was an agricultural school. Okay. And so I guess when they were looking, when Japan took over Hokkaido, officially, they were looking to build an agricultural school there. And I don't know why, out of all the people out of the entire world, they chose Clark. But. And what, what year was that? Was that the C a, a era of Manjiro? Maybe the, the a connection. Later. A, little a little bit later, later yeah. Then, then maybe there was some sort of connection, I think, because, uh, yeah, you know, after that, even now, I see government officials coming here. The emperor has been to Fairhaven. Yes, that was. Uh, I was the emperor nine came old. to Fairhaven. You you saw I, nine you know, years old. Wow! I really just learned. I thought it was the uh, Showa emperor, but it was actually Heisei. Right. That came when before he was right before, before he came, because I could think his father died in eighty nine. Right. Eighty nine. He came like one year before that, and they had donated a sword to this library over here. Oh, that's not the library. Yeah. That's the Millicent Library. Oh, so there's um, a samurai store for the emperor inside of there? It was stolen. By who? We don't know. They never mm. found it. So I guess they did get a replacement or something like that, but it wasn't the same. So. <laughs> I actually came a few months ago asking if they had it, they ever found it, but they said no. So. Interesting. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing the no, stories. Great to meet you. Great to meet you, too. Nice to meet I'll your family, watching. too. <laughs> Do you have a, say goodbye bye, to everybody? Bye, my favorite people. Bye bye. Oh, sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, no, I, uh, I'm, I'm Patrick. Hi, I live Patrick. up in Nashua, so I drove, oh, down, good. drove down here for this. Yeah. Um, first time. A, uh, first, well, I used to live in South Shore. Okay. Uh, so, so, you know, just South Boston area. Uh, so I've been down here several times, but not for this. Even living like that far away, like here, I didn't know. It's crazy, about this right? in, until like uh, your you mentioned it on stream. Manjiro is like the most unknown story, although it's massive well, when you I figure mean, it I, out. I mean, almost everybody knows about like Commodore Perry and right. all of that the stuff. The black ship and they open it up, and, and, and nobody knows about like the this. impact that this little it's, town had on on, on, it all. on the world at this point. Right. Um, so it was just really interesting. I had to come, and that when they like. It, Definitely sold it for me when they said they were going to be doing Tycho because. Oh yeah, did you, did you see yeah, it? Yeah. I, oh, okay, good. Yeah. I've traveled all kinds of places just to see Tycho. Like, from 20 years ago, I ended up in the middle of Sado. Uh, and, Kodo. Yeah. Yeah. Red like, celebration. Didn't know they were. Yeah, didn't know it was going to be happening. Ended up being there for a weekend and was like, oh, hey. Um, My friends at, at Kodo are going to be happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, like, just fe fe feeling the drums like here yeah. when they play is just. It's, it hits you. That's yeah. why I like going to the Aomori Festival, the Nebuta, every summer up up there. They have the floats, but the taiko drums and the haneto dancing, it sticks with you the whole year. It's like power coming into you. It yeah. hits you, yeah, you right here. Yeah, you just feel it even if you're like way, way far away. Right. That year they had like, because it was up at like like the temple, like up, up, hot, up top, and they had like a Romanian brass band playing oh. along with them because it was cool. like the Earth Festival or something, and they... Every so often they have. Oh, people. they do an, an international exchange. Yeah. This last year was from Africa, and uh, the last time they did it was from Korea. A drum master yeah. from there so came. Some crazy experience in the middle of the night um, for like a, a, a taiko drum and Romanian brass at the like. Oh, that's fun! And that island's crazy, crazy oh, at yeah. that time of year. Yeah. Uh, um, it's just getting across the island was weird because my buddy didn't tell me. I could have gone to taken the South Ferry. He told me because we always in Niigata. Right, right. So I took the North Ferry. I could have just taken the train down. Oh, and then to get over and is quite get over a would have long me way. Off at the right end. To get to the, yeah, yeah, and then trying to take the buses across the That's island. It's not so easy. Not so easy, but. Uh, and 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 then now here we are in Massachusetts. Yeah, <laughs> all, well, all connected by Japan, which is crazy. And Manjiro brought me here. Yeah. My bags. I, I have a you found me card for you. My bags upstairs. Okay. Um, Oh wow! I know, I know, like according to your stream, you're dining, but you're from around here, and I don't know if you've had Needham's in I don't know how many years. I have not. But it's it's main maple sugar. Oh wow! Wow. So like, you know, this will give me some energy. <laughs> don't eat it all at once. Oh, that's good um, advice. Well, thank you for this. Yeah, my brother lives in Vermont.
I haven't. Yep. I, I hadn't had I'm, much I'm of the maple. Maine, so there's always the Maine maple versus the Vermont maple. Which one's like, better? Oh, yeah, I know what you're gonna say. Maine. I, I, I have to. Like, <laughs> there's no difference. That's not what my brother in Vermont says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might yeah. say. But yeah, you know, I'm a big L.L. Mm -hmm. Bean fan too, so yeah. I do like uh, uh, Maine. Although I have not been there yet. That's for the next trip. Oh, to the you haven't been up to Maine. The big L.L.B. outfit. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got up there for the for the pilgrimage. Yeah. Where my clothes come from. Yeah, I ran into people in Tokyo Station once who were completely lost. They happened to have L.L. Bean backpacks on, what? so I just walked up to them and I'm like, "Do you guys need to know where to go?" Because I've been staying in Yokohama for about a, a month at that oh, wow. point, um, and they were just like, they were about to get on an express going in the wrong way. I've done that. I've done that before, and I Tokyo, lived there. Tokyo Station can be very confusing. Yes. Uh, if you're just there for the first time. Yes. Down a level or two, and you don't know where to go. You go the wrong direction, and then, well, that's how you learn about the city. Getting lost. It's yeah. The best way to, to do it. Way back to it. Yeah. I'm gonna let's go. I'm gonna go inside and just uh, sign. I want to sign off for everybody joining us in, with some taiko drums, and then. Uh, I'll film the rest of the time. This episode will be uh, coming out in December, and we'll we'll I'll show you a piece of the festival. But some of the history and background with the CEO of the, of the Friendship Association, uh, I think it's gonna it's gonna introduce you to a lot of that connection that Japan has with this little town. And we caught the ending. <laughs> it's good timing. Well, thanks. I hope I could. It was nice to share just a little bit of the John Mangito Festival. Happens every year in Fairhaven. Um, thanks so much for watching. Leave me your comments below. If you live in Massachusetts and you missed it, let me know what you thought of it. And if you're coming the next time, it's held every two years here. Next year will be held in Japan, in Kota. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next live stream look at that there's a new bedford whaling ship you could you could you could s s taste the fish the the whale here that's the history the background of this area see everybody